Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, here with a review of the Lee and Lee Hydra Shift 2 LCD, an all-in-one cooler with a 2.1 inch IPS LCD display and refined aesthetics, which means that the tubes are hidden away. But you can also do things like uh, watch a YouTube video on the display if you want to. And you can also adjust it with the pump itself by just twisting it, which will change the RGB lighting and the display on the center. Now, this is interesting because you can use this in what's called offline mode, where you don't even need to connect to the motherboard in terms of the USB connection. So you don't need to use L Connect if you don't want to. So that makes it less taxing on your system, which is pretty interesting in itself. You can, of course, use it with L Connect, and I'll get to that later on. But the Hydra Shift 2 is a refined version of the previous Hydra Shift, which is now thinner and slightly smaller, making it fit neatly and more easily into a wider array of cases. So if you are aware of issues fitting the previous model into a case, then this one shouldn't have as many problems. The Hydra Shift is also designed to fit really nicely, obviously at the top of the case, with the tubes in a position that basically allow you to center them as much as possible, hiding away a lot of the cabling and the tubing and making for a really clean build. You can see that it runs along the edge there and is secured in place with brackets and you can basically adjust these really easily as well. So there's some bracketing on the edge here which you can unscrew and maneuver around or loosen and then basically slide the tubes into the relevant position. So depending on your case and the CPU placement on the motherboard, you can reposition the tubes and then secure them at the top where the 140 millimeter bracket would be for your fans normally, and then just adjust that, tighten it down, and get it into the right place so it looks really good and clean in the build by the end of it. And that's the idea of this mounting. It basically allows you to really set up a very clean installation in there. Now, this all-in-one cooler will naturally work with Intel and AMD setups, LGA 1700 socket, AM5, 1851, all sorts of socket types. It has a really interesting bracketing system on it as well that you can see that essentially makes for a pretty straightforward installation no matter what you're doing, whether you use an Intel build or an AMD one. I'm going to do a separate wiring and setup guide on this, but essentially you have these clips that sit above and below the CPU on both Intel and AMD sockets. And then that allows you to slide the bracketing in place. Now, one thing I did find is that you do have to remove one of the RAM sticks if you've got four sticks of RAM beforehand. Now, the other thing to note is that it doesn't come with pre-applied thermal paste. You get a tube of thermal paste and a spatula included in the box. So you're meant to basically put your own thermal paste on and then spread it to your preference which is a little bit messy. The thermal paste is particularly sticky in this instance for some reason, so it's quite difficult to spread, but that's a small point. Basically, the cooler then seats down over the top of it, slides over to the left into the bracketing that you've put on the motherboard, and that holds it in place while you then secure it down. This is quite an interesting design and makes for a really secure CPU socket, which is obviously beneficial, and then you can put the additional RAM back in if you want to. So if you've got four sticks or two sticks and a lighting kit as I have here, then you can finish that off. It also has a little cover that sits down over the top of the screws at the end of it, so you can hide those away. And then some additional clips that you can put onto the tubes to neaten them up even more if you want to, included in there as well. So you can see it's very much about the aesthetics and the convenience of the setup. And it's also really convenient in terms of the wiring logic as well. And there's some interesting points here. So you'll see that there are three cables coming out of the radiator itself rather than the pump, USB connection, and then two fan power connectors. Now, obviously, these are for the fans that are on the radiator and for the pump itself as well as the display. The USB one is interesting because you can remove it. So as I mentioned, you don't necessarily need to use the USB connection if you don't want to. You do if you want to use L-Connect and you will get better performance and more customization options if you do do it. But if for some reason you want to do it in that offline mode and you want to remove this cable, you can just pop it out and not even put it into the build. This makes it neater in the system, but also means you can control the display and the RGB lighting by just twisting the pump cap. Now, it's worth noting you can also remove the fans with the same sort of logic. So if you wanted to swap them out, you can. The Hydra Shift does also come with a fanless variant, which you can purchase if you want to use your own fans. 
but I wanted to show that it was possible to remove the fans that are installed because they just connect up to the radiator like that. And then you can basically put your own fans of choice on there. So in this instance, I'm going to be using Lee and Lee's Infinity Wireless fans, which have also just released. And so you can put those on there instead. Now, obviously, these fans are not then going to connect to the internal wiring of the radiator and the pump because the logic is slightly different. The connectors basically won't plug in there, but you could do this if you wanted to instead or more logically by the fanless version, but it is possible to do this. So it has some flexibility to it. And obviously you can reduce the amount of wires coming out of the pump that you then need to deal with, which is pretty good. But obviously the pump itself, the one that sits over the CPU, doesn't have any cables on it. It's on the radiator itself. So those cables, as I mentioned already, is a USB connection and then two fan power connectors. So they recommend that the four cable one goes to the CPU fan header and then the two cable one goes to a PWM header, probably most logically CPU optional or a chassis fan header. This powers the display and the fans, the RGB lighting and obviously the pump and sets it all up so that you have a nice finished product at the end of it. And as you can see, you've got some nice RGB in there in that system as well. And really looks good in the NZXC H9 Flow RGB, which I'm using in this instance for demonstration purposes. What you'll see is that the RGB is also going across the Infinity fans that are also in the system. So if you do use L Connect, you can set it up like that. With L Connect, you can also tweak what is shown on the display. There's a lot of different options in there as standard with default ones that you can go through. You'll see there's various different backgrounds and readouts. You can have clock, you can have obviously the CPU load and other things, but you can upload your own images or animations and you can tweak things in here quite a bit. There's a few different templates, but you can make it your own. There's also a secondary additional screen option where you can turn this on and then the display on the cooler then becomes an additional monitor. This has some interesting use potential. Maybe you could play games on there or you could watch YouTube videos as I've already shown. I don't know what else you'd want to do with it, but it's a little quirk of the cooler that gives you various different options. Now, in terms of cooling performance, I wanted to get into some of that. So I'm going to start with some benchmarks and then some game testing. What I will say is that I had the fans set to standard speed at this time, so not maximum. But what I found is with the 9800X3D, I was looking at a maximum of like 74 degrees, but it was running a bit cooler there with OCCT. With Cinebench, again, this is set with standard speed on all the fans in the system. Basically found that I got a reasonable score with Cinebench 1302 for the CPU is pretty decent at that temperature. And basically that the temps are maxing out about 77 degrees, averaging a little bit less than that, but pretty good for a multi-core run on there. So I did a lot of other tests as well. I did some stress tests with Steel Nomad and with Time Spy Extreme, which you'll see in a second. But basically the temps here are also pretty decent. We're looking at about 54 degrees um, round there. Average is a little bit lower. Hardware Info 64 shows that we topped out at 66 degrees, but the averages were much lower than that. So it actually gave really good performance on the CPU during these stress tests. And bear in mind that these are going on for quite some time during the testing process. Time Spy Extreme also run multiple passes. There's 20 passes of this completed in there and during the testing process. And again, I found that the CPU was around 50 degrees and under during the majority of the tests, according to 3D Mark, maxed out at 70 degrees but averaged a lot less than that. Now for gaming purposes, I was maxing this out at 4K with the best possible settings on here. In Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, looking at around 58 degrees C, somewhere around just below the 60 degree mark, which I don't think is too terrible for a game that's being pushed pretty hard. With the, the finals, which is a bit more competitive shooter and a lot of fun that I've been having with this game at the moment. You can see that the temps are a bit hotter. It was closer to 70 degrees C here. Still think this is pretty good for a 360 millimeter all-in-one cooler. It's worth bearing in mind that I only had six intake fans and four exhaust fans, and obviously we're exhausting through the radiator during this testing, and this was the results I was getting. So 
what I found from various different games is somewhere in the 50 or 60 degree C mark from a variety of different games where I was basically trying to push it as much as possible, playing at 4K and playing for quite some time during the testing process. And this final one is Sniper Elite Resistance, which again is just around the 60 degree mark. Now, during all this testing with the fans on standard or quiet, because I do like to put them on quiet mode, I found the temperatures are quite similar, but also that the system overall wasn't too loud. The pump isn't noticeable in terms of the volume of that. And basically the whole thing runs really quietly. In a second, I'm going to leave you with a clip of my gameplay so you can hear the audio of the system running while I'm playing so you get an idea of what the volume was like. But basically, I just found it ran really quietly in this setup. I'll leave all the specs in the description down below so you can see what the specs of the build were. But hopefully you found this useful and thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.